Okay, well, I had another Miller and Kressel sent in. Here is the power supply. Okay, so here's the main board, and as you can see, this has all been running really hot. The Zener diodes right here, the two dropping resistors that drop the voltage from the main filter caps down to the plus and minus. I think it's 15 volts. It might be 12. I'm not 100% sure. But I am concerned about the amount of heat that has been generated in this thing. There's the big STK4050V power pack IC. Hopefully it's okay. I don't see any indication on the circuit board right here that it's been running hot whatsoever. So let's go ahead and hook up some speakers. I think I'll hook a dummy load up to it just in case there might be a dead short. The dummy load can accept that load without actually blowing up my little infinity. I think they're rated at 100 watt RMS little six inch speakers that I use on my test bench here. So let's go ahead and hook it up, see what happens. Okay, so I have it hooked up. I did connect the dummy load and I did do a brief test and I got almost no audio whatsoever. Probably five or 10 watts total RMS output. So I do have it connected without the dummy load and check this out. That's up all the way. That thing should be slamming right now. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and check the voltages on these Zener diodes right here and just see if I get voltage because I should have a plus and a minus supply that drives these op amps right here. So let's see what we get. Okay, so I do have it hooked up. It is powered on and I have it basically cranked up all the way right there. And so what I want to see is either a plus and minus 15 or a plus and minus 12. So I see 12.5 volts, absolutely perfect. And then this one should be on the anode of the diode. It should be a negative. And I see a negative 12.2 volts. That is perfectly fine. So why don't I have decent audio coming out of this thing? I'm wondering if one of these op amps is bad or the main power amp could be bad. But typically, if you have a defective power amp, it's a go or a no-go situation. So I'm gonna power this thing down and I'm going to reseat these ICs and just see if they might have a bad connection into the socket because they're both socketed. Well, that proved absolutely futile. So next, I'm going to have to actually get the scope out or use the voltmeter and see if I have audio coming out of these preamp chips and audio going into the power amplifier chip. So I need to go ahead and get a diagram on the STK4050V and see what the inputs and the outputs are and see what I have. And also make sure I have my B plus and my B minus going into it. So just in case you were curious, I did go ahead and check the fuses. Negative 58 volts, negative 58 volts, positive 58 volts, and positive 58 volts. Both fuses are fine. And I know the main AC input fuse is fine. I did ESR the four main filter caps they ESR'd 0, 0.00 ohms. They are perfectly fine. Okay, so I went ahead and did a bit more troubleshooting off camera. I did go ahead and replace both of the off ramps right here. It made absolutely no difference whatsoever. But then I just started to do some looking around and looking at these capacitors right here, these two big, they are 100 at 63 volts. And then this one, it's supposed to be a 100 at 63 volts also, but it is actually a 100 at 50 volts. So let me show you what I found when I did the ESR test on these capacitors, as well as these two little capacitors over here that are 10 at 63 volts. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and check the 10s at 63. I expect to see maybe an ohm or less. Oh, 0.9, perfectly fine on that one. And 0.87 on that one, perfectly fine. Now we'll check the 100s. And if you notice, it looks like they have been soldered on in the past. First one, 0.85, perfectly fine. Next one, 1.1, a little high for my liking. And finally, the last one, the oddball, no reading whatsoever. That thing is open. Let's go ahead and zip it out of the circuit and I'll show you what I found. The other thing that gave it away for me was the heat sink pad. Look at how chewed up it is over here on both sides. They normally have a hole stamped in them and it looks like somebody actually cut their own hole right here because they had it misaligned when they reassembled it at some point in its life. Anyhow, it's gonna be okay. It's just used as a thermal conductive material, and I'll try to get the original holes lined up when I reassemble this thing. 
So remember when you're replacing capacitors, always make a mark on the board to show you where either the negative or the positive is so you can get it back in the same orientation that the old one came out because sometimes the silk screening is not correct. Okay, got all my caps marked. I'm gonna go ahead and just replace all the capacitors in this board. Plus, I'll show you that little black capacitor right here. Okay, here are the 100s at 63. These are original equipment capacitors. I'm not sure what the date code is on them, but they are 85 Celsius. I think they could have used better, but they are audio quality caps. They are very good quality caps, but the ESR is off just a little bit. There's the first one, and then the same thing on the second one, 100 at 63. Now take a look at this third 100 capacitor. It is rated at 105 Celsius, and I do believe this is a NTE, New Tone Electronics, just a cheap, generic ChinaCon capacitor that somebody put in there at some point in its life. Let's take a look at the tens now. Now these are both very good quality 10 microfarad capacitors. These are Matsushita Panasonic type capacitors. Very high quality caps. I will be replacing both of those. Okay, well I'm certainly hoping this does take care of the problem because this capacitor lives right here. This sets up the negative feedback through a 56.2K resistor, and then it looks like a 2.8K possibly, I'm not quite sure, and then 100 microfarad to ground. That capacitor is open. It's not doing its job like it should, and once again, that sets up the speaker output through that resistor, this resistor coupled through this capacitor to ground, fed back into the negative input of the audio power amplifier. Now keep in mind, this is not the right schematic. This has an STK4048V. This unit has an STK4050V. I believe pinout and electrically, they're almost identical, but the 4050 is rated at 200 watts RMS. The 4048, I believe, is rated at 100 watts RMS. So let's go ahead and stab some new capacitors on this board and see if we have this problem taken care of. All the capacitors that will be going back into this unit are good quality Panasonic capacitors. There are the part numbers for the tens at 63 volts and then there are the part numbers for the 100s at 63 volts. Okay, all the caps have been changed. I had to go ahead and run a jumper on this one because just as soon as I unsoldered it, the pad lifted off the board, but it does attach to this resistor right here, which goes to this pin of the output IC. This thing has been so hot that when I went ahead and cleaned all the crud off the board, it took off some of the conformal coating, but I think it's gonna be just fine. I did go ahead and resolder the Molex connector as I always do just to prevent future problems. And as always, I'm going to go ahead and retension these Molex connectors just by adding a little bit of pretension to them. And we'll do the same thing to the one on the board that this mail pin goes into. Just like that. Okay, all back together, let's go ahead and power it up. I do have an audio signal generator connected to it right now with a 40 hertz tone going into it. And right off the bat, I've got way more audio than I used to have. Oh, big difference. Okay, I'm gonna have to hook up the dummy load now and we'll push it into the point of distortion. All right, dummy load is connected. So right there is the point of distortion and we're drawing just about 275 watts AC power now. I couldn't get it up much above about 40 watts AC input and the normal just resting current was about 30 watts so it was effectively only taking about 10 watts in and probably only putting about 5 watts out to the speaker. Much much better at this point so definitely a big improvement. We just start to go into the point of distortion at about 250 watts AC input. 
So probably 175 watts RMS output into eight ohms. Now keep in mind, this does drive two speakers. So it's probably actually driving into four ohms, which is probably closer to 200 watts RMS output. So I've got it connected to my watt meter over here and I'm on the 100 watt scale. We just start getting into distortion just over the 100 watt range. but definitely doing its job. Definitely putting out power much, much better than before. Let's go ahead and grab the infrared camera real quick and I'll show you some video from that. Okay, so here's the infrared camera. Looking at those resistors, man, those things run hot. 263 degrees approximately. Wow, once we get up close to them, 275 degrees, man. I think they could have done a little bit better job on those resistors, but the overall heat sink temperature right now is 130, well, 148 degrees approximately. Let's actually look through the fins of the heat sink and see what it says with the spot. Yeah, we're running just under 140 degrees or right at 140 degrees where the chip is. And then over on the other side, we're at 111 degrees. Let's go ahead and take a look at that power transformer real quick. See what temperature it's running at. Oh, it's about 89 degrees, no problem there. And then of course the bridge rectifier board, the hottest part on it is the rectifier itself at just under 100 degrees. And of course those equalizing resistors should be fairly hot over here as well. And they're 120, about 125 degrees. And now for the dummy load. So definitely running hot, 121 degrees. And the connectors are at 117. They're connected directly to the big resistor on the inside. So if we look down inside the dummy load, the big resistor is at 340 degrees approximately, dissipating that heat. So I'm gonna say a very successful repair on this unit. All right, well, there it is. Hooked directly up to the speaker with very low audio levels. It's working absolutely perfect. I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the Miller and Kressel MX100. Just had a bad capacitor. Somebody replaced it with a cheap Chinese knockoff, an NTE, New Tone Electronics capacitor, instead of a good high quality Panasonic. Anyhow, that's it, the repair. Once again, the Miller and Kressel MX100, all ready to go and ship back to my customer. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video on the repair of the Miller and Kressel MX100. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. If you have a question, that is the best place to contact me via Gmail. And please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.